basis. If you have bipolar disorder, you are now considered mentally ill, and that gun will be taken away from you. Whether you've been charged with a crime or not, they will start with you. You think I'm making this up? You don't know how governments work. I do. I do this for a living. You don't. Everything starts with very small steps, and it's not about a slippery slope. It is about an out-of-control, insane bureaucracy. Whether you've been charged with a crime or not, if you have bipolar or any other, quote, mental disorder, you now will be ba banned from owning a gun. The FBI firearms background check system will catch you. And your doctor now will become the snitch, as they were in the Soviet Union. That's what this uh, vampire has done today. You don't know this? I do. You don't know it today, but you'll know it tomorrow. So let's go back to some of the clips where the psychopathic vampire begins with a big lie today in clip zero one. The United States of America is not the only country on earth with violent or dangerous people. We are not inherently more prone to violence. But we are the only advanced country on earth that sees this kind of mass violence erupt with this kind of frequency. Stop right there. It so doesn't words, happen. The vampire has conveniently forgotten, or perhaps he never saw it on his iPhone, the massacre by Muslims in Paris, which was not so long ago. I know. Was he on a vacation? Was he playing a game with one of his rap star friends? There was a violent episode in Paris. Did he miss that one? conducted by his Muslim friends? Or how about a few years ago in Mumbai when Muslims slaughtered Jews and others in a hotel and left blood all over the lobbies? That was a slaughter that went on in India. Or how about the slaughter that goes on on a regular basis in Muslim nations? He's forgotten all about these things? So you're saying, look, Michael, you know, you're making statements here that don't make any sense because he's not talking about that. He's simply trying to control the nuts from getting a gun. That's what you think. You're wrong. He is using the nuts to take your guns. And many of you would agree with you. You see, many of you are liberals who are afraid of guns. I've said this to you many times, but you don't understand it. The reason you oppose guns is you're afraid if you had one, you'd kill yourself or shoot your wife. Many of you are on medication, extremely unstable in your professional life, in your personal life, in your daily life, in your daily routines. You're an unstable personality. You are the people who fear guns the most, and rightly so, you shouldn't even have one. Men like you should not have a gun, because you probably would shoot yourself or someone in your family, God forbid. But you're smart enough not to own a gun. But that doesn't mean that there aren't those of us who are stable enough to own guns. I've owned guns my whole life. I have never picked up a gun in anger, and I do get angry. I have never waved a gun around in anger. I have never threatened anyone with a gun. I have guns strictly for self-defense. And I have felt protected as a result of that. I have felt greatly protected as a result of that. It was one of the things I liked most about moving to California when I did in 1974. I loved the freedom I had to purchase weapons after coming from a dictatorship of New York City uh, where you really couldn't own guns. I grew up in a city where guns were highly restricted, and yet there were 50,000 homicides a year anyway. So if you want to start talking about guns and gun laws, I would say, you know, Mr. Obama, we agree there's too much gun violence in America, so why don't you do this? Why don't you send the National Guard into Ferguson and go into the public housing projects and seize the illegal weapons from the gang members? And then send the National Guard, the Maryland National Guard, into all the housing projects in Baltimore and take away all the Kalashnikovs and, A and AR-15s and machine pistols illegally possessed by those individuals who are not legally entitled to have them. And then we'll, then we'll believe one word that comes out of your vampiric mouth, Mr. Obama. You want gun control? Start with the gangs who are armed to the teeth. The police are afraid to go near the housing projects because of you, Obama, the police are outgunned by the goons. So start by seizing the guns from the goons. Use the National Guard in each state to go into the projects. It is uh, the Savage Nation. As I say, it's, uh, you know, one small step at a time, both for good and for bad. And today, uh, Count Obamula the vampire who drinks the blood of the Constitution one sip at a time, literally broke into tears 
as he was sated with the blood of the Constitution uh, in trying to take away a good portion of the Second Amendment. This is the same sociopath who had his goon from the Attorney General's office say things about the First Amendment that had eyebrows raised across the landscape of this fair land. And that was only a month or two months ago when the uh, same Attorney General who today stood beside him said that the First Amendment is there and we're guaranteed free speech, but when free speech, she said, edges towards violence, listen to the words that the snake used, edges towards violence, she will throw the book of the federal government at anyone who edges towards violence with speech about Muslims. Well, she took it back two days later because she realized that even America itself had had enough. Even the sports-mad, entertainment-mad population of this country wanted its First Amendment left alone. Well, today, Count Obamula said the very same things about the Second Amendment. He said, well, I believe in the Second Amendment, but, 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 we all believe in the First Amendment, but, 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 you can't yell fire in a theater. So it sounded reasonable. This is how, this is how they do it. I told you that when Hitler invaded various countries around Germany, he never said he was breaking the law, nor did he ever say he wanted to conduct war, nor did he say he did it for any anger, reasons of negativity. He did it strictly to recover what was his. We're going to talk about the mental illness that is being evidenced on a daily basis by this uh, individual, his pattern of grandiosity and overwhelming need for admiration a complete lack of empathy towards others. This is a disorder, narcissistic personality disorder, is characterized by a long-standing pattern of grandiosity and overwhelming need for admiration and usually a complete lack of empathy toward others. By this definition, President Obama would not be allowed to buy a Daisy BB gun by his own laws. And so what we have to do now is show you something else. Today, I'm going to show you that he is not only a narcissistic individual with a strict personality disorder he today when he announced his rules today he referred to himself 76 times he suggested 76 times that this was about himself doctors who have studied this man suggest the president is suffering from narcissistic personality disorder yesterday on the savage nation we talked about the fact that he evidences sociopathic behavior so let's listen now for a portion of the narcissist in action today on the Savage Nation, courtesy of Grabian. I still remember the first time we met, the time we spent together, the conversation we had, and that changed me. My hope earnestly has been that it would change the country. It wasn't the first time I had to talk to the nation in response to a mass shooting, nor would it be the last. The last time I met with Mark, which made me feel kind of bad, I was there with Gabby when she was still in the hospital, and we didn't think, and that visit right before Memorial, about an hour later, Gabby first opened her eyes. So I told him, and then I think of all the Americans who aren't as fortunate. And as I've said before, but I know the pain that she and her family have endured. Thursday, I'm going to hold a town hall meeting. My goal here, I'm not on the ballot again. I'm not looking to score some points. I think we can disagree. I want to be absolutely clear. I've said this over and over again. There's a ritual about this whole thing that I have to do. I believe... In the Second Amendment, no matter how many times people try to twist my words, I talk constitutional law, I know a little bit, I, I get it. I also believe that we can find ways to reduce gun violence consistent with the Second Amendment. I reject that thinking. Now, I want to be clear, Congress still needs to act. There are actions within my legal authority. All right, you get the picture. He refers to himself 76 times in a single speech. Now, one of the things that the narcissist in chief today talked about or smart guns. We're going to talk about the presidential memorandum and the Department of Defense, Department of Justice, Department of Homeland Security are uh, being mandated to take important steps to promote smart gun technology. Let me explain what this means in a nutshell without getting into the boredom of a gun itself, which I don't intend to do. On the website bearingarms.com, they wrote this paragraph about smart guns. Every totalitarian on earth would love nothing more or less than the ability to render every gun in the nation inert with the press of a computer key or disabling the guns of selected groups of foes at least.
Tyrants could then easily disarm the citizenry or a military or law enforcement unit that rose in opposition to them with the flip of a switch. They write, did I mention that Obama wants to force that sort of technology on the military and federal law enforcement? That's under the smart gun technology that the vampire today expressed interest in. Perhaps the most telling one of his sound bites today was the one I opened the first hour with, and if you missed it, we're going to play it again. He cited communist China as a role model for American gun control. Robert, please do the production in 22. Right here. A little spread of individual things that takes a little thought to see what we're talking about. So let's be clear here. Am I a Second Amendment absolutist? Yes. Am I a First Amendment absolutist? Yes. Do I live by the First Amendment? Yes. Do I live by the Second Amendment? I don't know. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. I do know that when you have a mad dictatorship emerge, which this has not yet become, it is only an armed citizenry that will prevent them from doing horrible things to the people. Notice the standoff in Oregon. Why do you think the government has not crushed them with, uh, ro with, uh, with armored personnel carriers yet? Because these men are many, many of them are ex-military up in Oregon. They're loaded for bear. They're armed to the teeth. And they know that if they get into a shootout, they're liable to have a lot of dead federal officers on the ground, which is the last thing this presidency needs right now. It'd be a disaster for Hillary Clinton, which is all they're thinking about. And so then we come back to the primary question, don't we? And the primary question is, Michael, let's be clear. Don't you think that there are too many deaths from guns in America? What would you do to control uh, this uh, gun epi this epidemic of, uh, of shootings in America? That's an important question. Well, let's talk about that. If you have an idea on this or you have ideas on any of the topics I've raised, the phone number is 855-400-7282, 855-400-SAVAGE. <clears throat> And we'll take the calls as they come in. Right now, we will start. We will start on the issue of mental illness. Joe on WABC, thanks for joining us. Joe, what's your point? Yes, Dr. Savage, I'm a 60% uh, disabled Vietnam vet, uh, PTSD. I see a doctor at the VA hospital, and now I'm concerned about going back at all. I own six guns um, registered. And I, uh, I go to bed every night with uh, my 9 millimeter next to me for home security. And another point I have is uh, I argue with my girlfriend, who's a liberal, that uh, these gun buyback programs are a joke. The only ones that's thrown their guns back are the law-abiding citizens for money, and the criminals get to keep their guns. So the now only I'm... thing that controlled violence in New York City was when we had a mayor who let the cops stop and frisk thugs. That reduced gun violence. That reduced gun violence. And the fact of the matter is this is not common sense gun control. This will enable health care providers to become snitches and declare anyone mentally ill to an FBI firearms background check system that will take their guns away. And that means any vet with PTSD will lose his gun. That's what you're afraid of, correct? I think the other one that's, I think he, he's the nut. I mean, you know, not to be rude, but he, this guy's crazy. I, I've never thought our country would see a president like this, I'll tell you right now. Joe, when you fought in Vietnam, did you ever think that you would be fighting to permit a man like this to be president? Never, ever, ever. I'm a patriot. I, I, I love my country. After when you were fighting in Vietnam, you were fighting against a communist tyranny that eventually won because of the very same forces that have destroyed us from within here, which is the American media and the American left undermined the military then, just as they have undermined America and the Constitution today. The forces of, of the left, the 1960s are back, only now they're running the country, and they're running it from the top down rather, rather than from the streets up. But when you were fighting in Vietnam... You were fighting a communist regime, and the leader of that communist regime was a man named Ho Chi Minh. Isn't that correct? That's correct. I was there um, during the time of his death, and I have the... Uh, uh, now, do you remember what the American left, the very same rabble that was in the gutters of America spitting on you when you came back from Vietnam? 
the very same vermin that are now running America. Do you remember what they were chanting in the streets?